Well, it's season three, and Merle got a great deal renting a seaside mansion named Dragon House. I wonder why it was such a good deal. Now, a few weeks ago, I posted a special report about Joe Biden's extension of the eviction moratorium. Well, last Thursday, the White House released a statement regarding the Supreme Court's recent decision blocking the CDC's eviction moratorium. Uh, in my special report, I speculated on the Biden administration's motivation for extending the moratorium and I still believe my facts are correct. I stand by my belief that the Biden White House believes the effects of the COVID-19 resurgence will be regional at most and funds already in the system will be enough to deal with the eviction issues. I still firmly believe the Biden administration, more than ever, will seek a strong economy. They have been expecting this court decision and uh, one reason I believe this is a press release last Wednesday from the Treasury Department stating that a million rental assistance payments have been made at, during the month of August. $25 billion has been allocated for housing support and over $5 billion has been spent, with just over $2 billion provided to around 400,000 homes in June. The Treasury Department believes hundreds of thousands of applications are in the pipeline and Treasury's instituted a few policies to help these people. There are seven things they've done. They're reducing red tape around documents required to receive assistance to the point where documentation won't even be required to receive rental assistance in some cases. They will be working with larger landlords directly and in other cases, relief funds will be delivered before the paperwork is even filled out. They also, okay, technical trouble, sorry. They're also moving to cover rent that is past due and will pay rent bonds for some tenants. They encourage local and state officials to extend their own eviction moratoriums while moving them, while moving to reallocate even more money to the efforts. The report stated it believed application backlogs are being cleared and other states are developing the programs to administer the funds. Now, I firmly believe the Biden administration is determined to blunt the economic impact of any COVID-19 countermeasures with an eye toward the midterm elections. Um, at the moment, the Democratic Party's control of either House of Congress hangs by a shoestring on a good day. The president is the head of his party, and the, his administration is acutely aware of the measures many states and local governments are putting in place. The West Wing knows that elections are won by the turnout, but are also lost by the apathy of voters who are suffering economically. Um, against the backdrop of all of this, the governor of Hawaii made a uh, press conference the other day. Now, whether he gave Washington a heads up or not, the West Wing was anticipating the governor's press conference last Monday announcing measures to address Hawaii's COVID-19 surge. 
Uh, Hawaiian Governor David Ige encouraged residents and visitors to reduce travel to essential, to essential business activities only. Quote, once again, I encourage everyone to restrict and curtail travel to Hawaii, residents and visitors alike. End quote. This will coincide with a month of efforts to limit the resurgence of the virus lasting well into October. Upon questioning, the governor stated, quote, I'm aware many of our businesses are currently struggling. Our call to reduce travel will have an impact, but I do know that's a risk but as a community, that's a risk we have to take. The governor said he asked airlines to cooperate with these efforts. Quote, he, he said he had, quote, asked them to do whatever they could do to reduce travel to the islands. Um, 2,000 years ago, the Chinese built a seismograph to detect earthquakes. 2,000 years ago. The emperor realized that earthquakes create chaos, and that has political ramifications. The seismograph allowed the imperial government to preemptively send support to the affected regions and minimize the disruption and chaos to the nation. Now, like the Chinese court two millennia ago, the West Wing is watching too. And while you and I have no access to the, their data that they're seeing, analysis of their activities and responses can give us a hint to what they're seeing. And that's exactly what I'm doing.